On today's edition of Locked on LSU, John Garcia Jr., Senior Insider for Recruiting at SI.com, joins us looking at the future of LSU in the 2023 class, some visits that have yet to come up in the fall, but also looking ahead to the more recent future in 2022, some of the 2022 recruiting classes that LSU will be facing this year. All of that and more on today's edition of Locked on LSU. You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, thank you for making Locked On LSU your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And I also want to thank John Garcia Jr., Senior Insider in Recruiting at SI.com. And I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. So we are so close, John. We are so we can close. so close. We can taste this college football season, but kind of looking forward to next season before we kind of look back at next week in that game against Florida State. LSU has a couple upcoming visits. First and foremost, Zealand's Hurd, an offensive tackle out of Monroe, Monroe at Neville High School. I mean, he is a guy that's highly touted across the country and especially in the state of Louisiana. So what are his strengths and what can LSU get out of a commitment like Zealand's Hurd? Well, look, he's 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6, so there's extremely, you know, prototypical left tackle size here and, and great length. Uh, I was actually watching some uh, cam clips of him uh, just the other day, and, and man, he redirects so well for that size. So a lot of great qualities for this, this pass-first nature of college football where you need blockers uh, who can deal with these smaller, quicker pass rusher so great length and movement skills have become really the primary you know uh traits that you look for with these big time offensive tackle talents and it's why i heard has a bunch of schools clamoring for him he was a guy who you know a year ago we didn't really hear about as much he was playing defense he was playing offense he was kind of just figuring it out but you know once big players like that figure it out the, the light bulb goes on and and things can change in a hurry and his recruitment in, in the last 12 months has totally flipped upside down and, and he's now among the two or three most coveted i would say offensive tackles that have yet to make a verbal commitment of course lsu's right in there he's in state we, we, we've talked about the run that lsu has been on within state lines and and there's still obviously a huge need at the position so you certainly feel good about the tigers chances but other programs are trying to make this thing interesting florida florida state mm -hmm. nebraska got them on campus for an official visit we know mickey joseph and company up there are, are recruiting louisiana very very hard so i think it'll be interesting heading into september 1st but you gotta like where lsu stands uh, at this point yeah, Vicky Joseph, a name that we know all too well. Uh, but you mentioned that his recruiting has been kind of turned upside down. What exactly happened there? Well, I think there was a lot of question marks on on his position. You know, when when these linemen are are playing both sides of the ball, you you really don't know uh, until you you feel like a recruit is settled. And I think once he uh, settled last fall as an offensive lineman, and then coupled that with some you know good weight gain, and then people got eyeballs on him after all the crazy coaching changes happened in the spring. Now he just he shot up the rankings. He shot up everybody's recruiting boards because now you're you're able to go see him at work at, at 6'5", 300 pounds, and he carries it really, really well. And he's performing very, very well at these camps, even though he's not this lifelong offensive tackle. So the the quick turnaround in, in his on-field game, plus the spring evaluation period where you can go down and get eyeballs on, on you know, the Neville prospect, I just think it, it allowed his recruitment to explode. And, and everybody kind of jumped in almost all at once. So it was probably overwhelming for him. At one point, uh, and he took the visits, as you would imagine, when, when your recruitment does explode. But now it's much more settled and, and much more calm heading into that September 1st decision. But I think the combination of settling at the position and look, it's a premium position. Everybody yeah. needs these these tackle candidates. I mean, this is, uh, you know, five premium positions in the sport. And you could argue after quarterback, some will say pass rusher, offensive tackle in, in one order or the other. Those are the next two 
most important. Um, and maybe corners is in there as well. So when you're in one of those premium spots, your recruitment can change in a matter of days, much less a matter of months. Uh, and, and, and Hurd is a great example of that in this class. And he's one like the more you see him, the more you like him. So if we see that, colleges see that, and and it means he could you know still get a whole lot better before he enrolls at, at one of these schools. So the trajectory also plays a factor into why programs are really pressing for him. And you mentioned tackle such an important position. It is it is an underratedly important position, but one in particular that I think LSU fans feel really good about is Will Campbell. And it might kind of feel like deja vu all over again with him, you know, getting a tackle out of Neville. So what kind yeah. of weight does that carry, do you think, for Zaylet Turd, having his former high school teammate already at LSU and already getting a starting position his true freshman year? I mean, it's huge. I mean, you, you're seeing that what, what schools sell you is, is what they sell you. But when you can see it and you can make a phone call and confirm it and get any other ounce of information you need in the process, it really changes the the perception of the, the angle and the pitch that a program is giving you because you're tangibly seeing it at work. You know, you can say all the greatest things and be a used car salesman and all the stuff we, we cliche and throw at these coaches. But when the product is being translated and, and Will's playing early and all of that, it's just a different feel. So now you can say, hey, come be the next guy to do that, as opposed to, hey, come do something that you can't really see or feel, but you just got to kind of believe us in. No, come do what you've seen this guy do, you know, 12 months before you, you were uh, able to get in that position. And you mentioned all of these schools hopping in Nebraska, Florida, Florida State, but he's still predicted to be make his commitment at LSU. I believe his commitment is scheduled for September 1st. Right. What could happen between, you know, today and <laughs> September 1st that could potentially switch that up? How is he feeling or what could change that? Usually when we're this close, Caroline, the kids know. Um, I hadn't been in touch with heard himself in terms of, hey, do you, privately, do you already know or are you just waiting for the day kind of thing? Mm -hmm. But typically, especially when there's an in-state favorite, uh, kids know, you know, a, a week out or so. And, and that's right about where we're at with, with this herd verbal commitment. So I think it's, it's a relatively safe prediction at this point. But look, they're still teenagers. Uh, there's still a lot of phone calls to be had. You know, Louisiana is one of the states where NIL money is, is legal for high schoolers. So you never know how something like that can throw a wrench in, into these recruitments. But I do think all things even, the combination of, of really the upward trajectory of this LSU class in state. I mean, retaining Brad Davis, we all know, was such a big deal anyway uh, for Brian Kelly and company. So I think all of that bodes really well for LSU to keep another big time Louisiana and in state. And, and I think another that kind of external factor that makes me feel confident in that is there's two other interesting uncommitted tackles in the state of Louisiana, and we're not hearing as much LSU buzz with them. And we know LSU wants more mm -hmm. at that position. So I think there's they there's a more. bit of a, hey, you know, this thing is pretty close to being done feeling at LSU. And I think that's more, you know, uh, relative to Hurd's recruitment than, than some of these others. And some of these others are, are really good players as well. Uh, but I think LSU's got Hurd highest on the board, and I think that's probably where he ends up. As we get geared up for football season, your small business also gets geared up for fall as well. So you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people that you want to talk to faster, and it's for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like the screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. I work at a radio station and we needed to find a fill-in producer ASAP. We just didn't have enough people and we didn't have people with the right skills. So we turned to LinkedIn and we found somebody in days. And it's why, why, it, it is why small businesses ranked LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And kind of looking at another recruit that 
not just LSU is high on, but pretty much every school in the country is high on, and that's Nicholas Harbor. I was looking at 24-7 sports, and they have a list of the top freakiest recruits for the 2023 class, and Nicholas Harbor was number one, first and yeah. foremost, for his just freak speed. But what else about Nicholas Harbor is so special? He's listed as an athlete, so no really set position there. So what's so special about him? Well, that's where it begins for me. You know, the, the speed is great. And look, 10-2 in the 100, for those who don't know, I mean, that is – for a guy who's you know would be 40 pounds lighter than him that would be impressive for, for anybody that would be impressive but when you do that at 6'4 225 now it's like it's it's like wait wait what is this a typo you know the the, the freak moniker is overused but for him it is mm -hmm. underused i mean he is as unique uh, of a recruit as we've ever seen so i think the speed on that frame is just not something we, we really ever see. So when it comes to football, yeah, you can throw that at a bunch of different positions and probably feel good about it. Wide receiver, tight end, certainly mm -hmm. pass rusher, even off ball linebacker. He could probably play safety just from a height, weight, speed standpoint. What can he do? The, Jeez. Yeah, exactly. There's just a lot you can do with that, especially because that's what the game is demanding at this point. It's about speed and space and if you've got that kind of frame and that kind of speed you're going to to make you know a, a huge impact think about it he's bigger than dk metcalf and faster right now i mean it's it's really hard God. to put it into into words what we see this high school uh, he's a senior now but he just started his senior season doing on the track and on the football field but i think because it's a premium position and because it's a past first nature of college football i think most peg him as a pass rusher just because there's just a need. Everybody needs more guys who can get after the quarterback. So I think that's mm -hmm. kind of where most programs see him, uh, including LSU. But look, nobody's going to say, hey, you can't come catch passes here. Uh, right. He's going to run track in college as well. That's a huge priority for him, as you would imagine, because he's a, a borderline junior Olympian at this point with, with some of the times he's putting out. So he's got wow. one of the more unique recruitments because there is an element of positional question there's an element of which sport is more important. And then the the X factor is if you're so focused on track, do you just go pro right out of high school? It's like we talk mm -hmm. about with kids who are great baseball players. You might just go pro right out of the gates as an 18 year old and then you you don't play any college football. So there's there's a lot that can happen in this recruitment. So I think that's why one, so many schools are involved and curious and interested. But two, I think that's why it's it's gonna go the distance because I think there's so much more information that harbor needs to figure out before he makes one of these final decisions but i do think all things even he will go to college play football and run track that much he has said is, is a priority if he does go to college and that's why lsu michigan oregon um miami south mm -hmm. carolina everybody like you said wants to jump in on on this recruitment um he's taken zero official visits you know so he's totally at the beginning of this thing relative to a lot of the other kids that we talk about in this class of 2023 so there's still probably some twists and turns ahead in his recruitment but lsu is one of those programs caroline that offers great success at both i mean there's there's a great track record obviously from the football perspective but in track when people who don't know it is a huge deal in the sec and for a long time especially on the men's side lsu has been kind of that program yeah. in the sec you know florida arkansas have, have had uh you know some great runs on the track uh, among others as well so it, it's really a fascinating uh, recruitment to look at because he's considering more variables than just about any kid who's who's still on the board which is a lot to consider. And when I saw that he was potentially thinking about going pro and track, either right out of high school or out of college as well, the first thing that came into my mind was Oregon, almost like a Devin Allen kind of kid, prioritizing track at Oregon and also playing at that wide receiver position as well. But his uh, his official visit is scheduled for October at LSU, which always makes me happy whenever they visit in the fall because I love when a recruit comes in for a game day experience. What do you think he needs to see or what do you think that he's prioritizing on these visits that LSU could or could not offer him? I think that w with such a national recruitment, like you talked about, Oregon, Michigan, the schools all over the country, Miami, I think LSU can offer that true kind of classic 
SEC passion. You know, that's something that, you know, everybody knows about Death Valley. I don't know which game uh, he's scheduled to check out, but if it's a night game, you feel a little bit better about it. Um, and, and like we said, the track element is there at LSU as well. But I think from a football perspective, just uh, kind of that classic, hey, this is Death Valley. This is different. No disrespect to, to, than all these other atmospheres that you're going to go see in person. And I think what makes the official visit unique is, is you get – a lot more intimate time with the coaching staff outside of football. So in theory, Saturday, you fly in, you eat good, very good, go to the game and all that, and it's fun, maybe go to a party or whatever, but then Sunday, maybe it's breakfast at Brian Kelly's house, and it's a little bit more quiet and indoors, and, and now you can you know, reemphasize the pitch on top of that. So I think you know Kelly's long tenure track record, especially later in these recruiting cycles, paired with – checking out Death Valley in person for a kid who's not as well traveled as your typical recruit. And look, he's from DC. So mm -hmm. not, he didn't grow up in that, in this region, understanding just the, the true intricacies of, of this sec passion that everybody uh, talks about. Um, so I think that that stuff is all going to bode very well for LSU, particularly if, if, I mean, when you say October, I think Alabama immediately, but if it's one of these big games and, and, or it's at night, I mean, my gosh, it's it's going to be really hard to top that atmosphere just from a pure entertainment or enjoyment perspective. And then again, you can close the deal the next day with uh, with, with some of the more classic and intimate uh, recruiting pitches. And, and he's heard them all at this point. I'm Maybe sure. you get the you certainly get the track coaches involved. You get everybody involved when Harbor and his family's in town. But um, to, to even get an official, I think, is a big deal because obviously there's seven, eight teams that really, really want him, and he can only take five officials. So to already have that scheduled, I think, is a really big deal for LSU. And when you think of football and track together, like you said, Oregon comes to mind pretty early, but I think LSU is one that comes to mind uh, right in that same ballpark. We talk a lot about the future next year of LSU football, this 2023 class that's coming in next year. I kind of want to focus on the 2022 class, not at LSU, but at Florida State. Because I think at this point, a lot of LSU fans are familiar enough with the Florida State program to kind of know what they're getting into just about a week from now, a little bit over. So this 2022 class that's coming in for Florida State that LSU is going to be seeing next week. It was the 19th ranked recruiting class in the country, as well as bringing in a bunch of transfers into yeah. this year as well. I mean, I look at several four stars, three four star offensive linemen added more three stars in that class, even in four more transfers off offensive linemen coming in this year. When I talked to some people who cover Florida State, they said that the offensive line was the thinnest position, probably the weakest position on that team. And so I was thinking to myself, well, great, wonderful, because I feel great about this LSU defensive line. <laughs> they can get to the quarterback. You know, they can win this game in the trenches. But looking at all of these offensive linemen coming into Florida State in this freshman class, what do you think that they can contribute, not just next week against LSU in the Superdome, but throughout the rest of the season as well? Well, yeah, I, I think what, what you're hearing on FSU is totally right. I mean, that was the clear position of focus at the end of the 2022 cycle for Mike Norvell and company. And like you said, they, they hit it in the portal, but they had to hit it from the high school ranks as well. And you just get the sense that at some point early, one of these young players is, is going to have to make his, his collegiate debut, maybe on, on a very big stage. And I think where that conversation begins for Florida State is with Julian Armella uh, from St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the top high schools in the country, yeah. a guy who was recruited very heavily by LSU. So certainly one that, you know, maybe some uh, parts of that coaching staff are, are pretty familiar with. Uh, he's on the two deep at FSU. He's not starting just yet. But but again, that that group has been thin um, and and. You know, the big guys muck it up more more than anyone. So the potential for injury and, and the need to shuffle it up is, is always right in front of you, especially early in the season as everyone's getting adjusted. So, yeah, Julian Armella is one to keep an eye on. He's a versatile guy. Um, he's he's one who we thought was probably more of a right tackle or maybe even an, an interior prospect. But he's actually getting left tackle reps in Tallahassee. So that will be quite interesting to see if, if he sees the field. Um, and then there's some other players, uh, particularly on offense, uh, that, that could be interesting. Rodney Hill, kind of a change of pace running back, a smaller, shiftier, faster type of player. He could also factor into maybe the return game. Ditto for Sam McCall, who was kind of this receiver DB hybrid in high school. Uh, he's factoring into the return game as well uh, at FSU as, as a true freshman. So I think it won't be glaring 
where, where these freshmen will make a huge impact, but in the margins, and certainly uh, if, if there is some rotation and shuffle at some of these important positions, I think you could see some of these teenagers hit the field against LSU in, in game one. So that will, of course, be something interesting to track as, as we look for, you know, really two teams that, that need to kind of figure it out, right? One with a brand new right. coaching staff and one with – uh, kind of a, it feels like a bit of a make or break year for Florida State. So a, a lot at stake for for both of these programs right out of the gate. Of course, FSU will get one game in first. They play uh, they play Duquesne this weekend, so they'll get a little bit of uh, of action before LSU uh, lines up against them. But but certainly, obviously, when, when the competition level will step up significantly for that one, and, and there'll be plenty on the line. And like you mentioned, this is such a key game for both teams for such different reasons. Brian Kelly, at least just starting off his tenure with a win. And then Mike Norvell kind of fighting for his job. He's on the hot seat this year. I mean, Florida State had a top 20 recruiting class for the 2022 class. And I feel like Florida State always recruits very well. They always have a top 20, top 15, top 10 recruiting class. In your opinion, do you think this is the class to kind of solidify Mike Norvell's job for a little bit longer, or will that seat remain hot? <laughs> well, I think, you know, the LSU game could really – it'll be the table setter. No, no disrespect to Duquesne. Sure. Of course, you expect Florida State to win that. So if, you know, even how the game goes, maybe not even the result, right? Even how mm -hmm. the game goes could dictate how hot this seat gets. If, if it's a – back and forth game and and you know LSU wins you know with a late score I don't think anybody bats an eye at it but if you know if LSU you know establishes the line of scrimmage and runs away from the Seminoles yeah I think this thing becomes a bit of a frenzy in Tallahassee so I think there's there's a lot at stake for for both sides here and and you just wonder how many of those freshmen with that in mind hey high risk high reward I need to roll the dice kind of mentality how many of those freshmen get the call? Because I will say a lot of those guys we talked about, Armella, Sam McCall, Azarea Thomas is another yeah. one, great big physical defensive back, very big prospects. So physically, you feel like they can come in and compete just from a height, weight, speed standpoint. But of course, there's, there's no substitute for that experience. But those guys have all held their own in camp and, and you just wonder if if they get to make some some uh you know big debuts uh, against lsu uh, for their second game of, of their collegiate career uh, but i think yeah we can get a lot from this duquesne game i think all yeah. of them are going to see the field in in some way shape or form so depending on, on maybe how that goes we'll, we'll see if uh norvell is willing to roll the dice week two but there's no doubt that or week one i guess this is week zero coming up but there's no always doubt always messes me up yeah like why do we have a week zero just just I don't let's even just know. go like start from one like we were taught in elementary school but anyway um look you got to roll the dice if, if your seat is hot you got to roll the dice take some chances and i think that means that younger guys are going to play more times than not so we will definitely see uh, a lot of teenagers on the field for florida state this year john garcia jr senior insider for recruiting for sa.com where can the people find you you said it, si.com slash college. All the content is right there. And uh, we'll be bugging folks on Twitter as well, at John Garcia underscore JR. Awesome. Appreciate you so much. Thank you for John Garcia Jr. for joining us, as he does just about every week. We appreciate you. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And you can get more on the SEC by making Locked on SEC your second listen. Every day, host Chris Gordy and the local experts of Locked on take you across the SEC in 30 minutes. Make Locked on SEC your second listen.